Good morning, everyone. When I was shown this this morning, I was guaranteed it wouldn't work because the technology has got some mismatching software. So I hope I can get it to work. The, I'm going to talk, and I've got 15 minutes, so it's very short for what was quite a big project. But the National Protected Area Expansion Strategy, a year and a half ago, we submitted it, the revision to DEER. They are going through a process of formally adopting it. That hasn't quite happened yet, but I do have their go-ahead to talk to you about it today. It was put together by the four of us, and with the expertise split really being Stephen and Andrew around the spatial planning side, James and myself on the revision and um, implementation side of it. What do I push here? Down there, OK. Um, so I wasn't quite sure of the audience I was talking to, so there's a little bit of background. The first National Protected Area Expansion Strategy was in 2008. It was set up with a 20-year rolling time horizon and the intention to review it every five years. So what we're talking about today is NPA is 2016. That's the first revision. The five-year timeline, and you just have to have a broad, fuzzy edge on that. Um, but fundamentally, we haven't changed the structure of the strategy. It's really about changing the detail and the content and trying to tighten up on some of the implementation side of things. Why do we want it? Well, essentially, South Africa doesn't have a protected area network that fully represents all ecosystems and processes. So this is about establishing some kind of cost-effective way of addressing that. Improve ecosystem representation, ecological sustainability, and then, of course, where possible, to try and strengthen climate change resilience. And it does this by setting targets, by mapping priority areas within which to work, uh, detailing the operational plan, and, and I'll go into a little bit of detail around that, and then the coordination issue, which James spoke about earlier. It's also quite crucial when you have all these different provinces and implementation agencies that there's a reasonable level of coordination. The approach to setting the targets, in, when the first um, NPAs were set out, there were some inconsistencies where different plans had different base databases or there, were, there was non-alignment. So the approach now is to take the, the National Biodiversity Assessment as being the key um, planning tool for, for alignment when you're setting targets so that you don't end up with these mismatches. And what I also wanted to tell you here, there's, there's a whole nested hierarchy of setting targets. We, we heard from the earlier talk about how Australia has approached it. Within South Africa, we've worked out what the long-term blue sky target is um, for each ecosystem type. And that's the, the, the very big long goal. Then with, uh, underneath that, there are national commitments, the CBD, and so the Aichi targets, which mostly are nestled within the long-term targets, but not actually in every instance. Within that, we're setting 20-year targets, which is what this plan focuses on, and then within that, a five-year implementation target. So there's this very nested and aligned set of targets that have now been achieved uh, through the spatial planning guys. Of course, the scientific uh, robustness and ecologically-based approach are, are key to the plan as well. What's novel in the new plan? I think the, having a single map which covers the country wall-to-wall -wall, um, for all ecosystem types has been a, a big step forward compared to the 2008 uh, plan. This enabled targets to be set for all terrestrial vegetation types broad marine systems, wetlands, rivers, estuaries, etc. There's a lot of emphasis has gone into the marine side of things, and you'll see a lot of the area that has been added has, has also covered the marine side of things. If you compare that to 2008, where we really just focused on, on the top two, the terrestrial vegetation and the broad marine systems, there's a lot more resolution and ability to assess where you should be working and how well you're doing. And then we've tried to put in a much more realistic implementation plan. So progress between 2008 and 
Again, there's a bit of a mismatch here. I'm going to try to point. Is there, is there a pointer? So this is 2008 to 2014 that the actual, what have we achieved from the, the year dot. In the terrestrial systems, 325 separate declarations took place in that time, adding 270,000-odd hectares. In the national park system, sorry. Within the nature reserves, it, it's a slightly smaller number, but a substantially bigger area was added. Protected environments is very similar pattern, totaling in the terrestrial environment 450, 460 odd um, declarations and 830,000 hectares. Whoever's doing housekeeping, the batteries are flat here. Um, in the marine environment, we've made a fantastic progress, although only three declarations, 18 million hectares were added over this period. Another battery or another pointer? Okay, no problem. Okay. Thank you. So, what do we, what does the plan say we should be looking towards over the next five years with, with that um, sense of what we've achieved. Here, I, I, the table I've put in is try to nest those five layers of targeting that I showed you. And we talk about uh, these broad zones where we're trying to establish an equivalency between the marine environment and the terrestrial environment. On land, we would call it a biome, but including the marine, it's the, the biozone. So within in that kind of framework, you can see we've set up targets of what we're trying to achieve over the next five years. If, if, if I take an example, within an estuary environment, our blue sky estuary achievement uh, targets are 20% of the total. Within the Aichi context, that would be 17% of the total. The 20-year plan picks up on a large proportion of that with just short of 4% over the next five years. So obviously this is all condensed, the, the detail is all there, and I, I'm not going to sit here and spell it all out. But you get a sense of how across each of these um, biozones, there's very clear and specific area targets that are now being set up over the next five years and contextualized in the, in the broader planning environment. To reach the 20-year targets, it's quite a lot that's on the, on the table. We're looking, I've switched here to kilometer squared just to keep the numbers reasonable, but 250,000 kilometers squared need to be added, of which 104 are in the marine benthic environment. I'll, I'll show you the marine pelagic environment is slightly different coming out at the end. And 146,000 kilometers squared on the terrestrial ecosystems. These numbers are very big and, and quite scary if you understand the South African landscape. Um, very specifically for wetlands, 2,300 um, kilometers squared. For rivers, 1,500 kilometers squared. And then in the marine pelagic environment, which may have a certain level of overlap with the benthic, another 104,000 kilometers squared. So th these are very large... Um, areas that come out if we are to achieve what we think we should be achieving. The priorities within those have taken on this, uh, the new approach, which is to allow a bottom-up approach. The provinces, understanding the planning environment, set their own priorities. And the national strategy has taken on consolidation of those priorities. So that there is buy-in at, at a provincial level rather than this top-down type of um, implementation. It also allows provinces to work in the way that they naturally work rather than trying to get everybody to fit one model. Uh, so the provinces set their targets. Um, sorry, the, the targets are set at a national level, but then the provinces align with those targets. 
the national level sets the underlying planning principles and the ecological um, perspectives around climate change, representativity, efficiency, etc. The collating with the private, uh, the provincial and other sector priorities takes place at the national level. And then there are often these gaps where we know that an area is important, but for whatever reasons they've slipped through a, a more generic planning approach. So picking up on those gaps is a national priority and, and it's been included here. The identified priority areas, so there's within the broad targets that are set, priority areas um, cover 184,000 square kilometers. In addition, mostly in the marine environment, there's 72,000 square kilometers under negotiation. This was a year and a half ago when the strategy was developed. That hasn't been recalculated um, now. But there is much, much stronger, and I think this is quite, quite an important and a very nice um, step forward in this whole thing, alignment between the overall set of priorities and what is required for the next 20 years in ecosystems. If we achieve all of that, the number of well-protected ecosystems should double over the next five years. Sorry, over the next 20 years, over the next 20 years. The not protected ecosystems should halve. So that, that's a significant step forward in terms of what we have. The areas that are going to suffer the most are the succulent, karoo, and desert biozones. They're going to have the least benefit. And the greatest benefit is going to be experienced in grasslands, savannas, wetlands, riverine, and offshore um, benthic and pelagic biozones. So it gives you a very good sense of, of how those priorities will take us forward if they are achieved. Just to give you a spatial sense of how it's all working, these are the, the nine provinces. When we did this plan, um, the Northern Cape didn't have its own provincial protected area expansion strategy, but all the other provinces did. So the next slide I show you is going to have all of this um, incorporated into one national strategy, except that the Northern Cape is now included. It was yesterday afternoon that Stephen sent me the map. So that, that's absolutely hot of the press um, for the country with the dark blue areas being existing protected areas, the light blue areas being areas under negotiation. Um, the priority focus areas are the dark green and areas that are severely underrepresented still are in this pink, um, pinkish color. So it gives you a very good single spatial sense of the entire country with the marine areas, with the, the Prince Edward Islands, all incorporated where we're heading over the next 20 years and what we have. The strategy can't only deal with the spatial side of things, so the mechanisms of expansion, nothing really has changed from 2008 to 2016. Acquisition of land remains, but it's a very expensive option. Contract agreements, which includes the biodiversity stewardship programs, with the cost effectiveness benefits and the synergies with land reform and um, rural development that exists. The, the potential there is it's a very strong element, will still be going forward. And then, of course, the, the reassignment of state land, although it has limited applicability, is still very real as an option. From a financing point of view, the, the revised strategy doesn't have um, significant improvements. I'm being told I've got two minutes left, um, so I'm just going to move through this quickly, and I won't focus on that. I'm not sure whether two minutes is going to allow me to move to the other document, so I'm not going to do it, actually. The, the implementation side, we focused a lot on getting this better, and we took all the implementation items, identified priority actions, we engaged with each province on those priority actions, we got each province to set their targets, and we've amalgamated them. So they're very clear, specific targets for spatial achievement, for reporting, for monitoring, 
for um, being able to very clearly assess at the end of the five-year period what have we achieved, where have we fallen short, and so we're entered into a much stronger, clearer phase of this program where I think the first five years, the targets weren't that tight or clear and we, wouldn't, we didn't find it easy to assess how well we had done. So sorry, I can't, there's a hyperlink um, that I can't get to work. So I'm not showing you that. But if anyone wants it, I can show you after the talk. <coughs> what are the information gaps? Continual updating of the biodiversity information. This is an ongoing activity and I think it's very important. There's a very clear um, need to keep that focus in the marine environment well, as well, where the um, finer scale planning can take place. Identifying protected areas by other means. I think we heard James talk about that. The Australians are grappling with the same issue. What qualifies to be in and what qualifies doesn't qualify. There's certainly opportunity there, well-protected land that's not currently represented in the map, in the plan. I've discussed that. Um, better understanding ecological processes, so it's not only a representativity issue. Using better, um, making better use of biodiversity offset opportunities. And that's it. Sorry, I, I chased that. <laughs>